This is The Reality. And a very special hello to you. Welcome again to The Reality, a half-hour talk show talking about the reality of Jesus Christ in our lives. Well, once a month here on The Reality, we feature The Reality Bible Special, getting into God's Word and getting God's Word into us. Today, I share The Reality Bible Special with Pastor Peter Jenkins. And today on the Reality Bible Special, we're going to be asking the animals to teach us about the Lord, our Creator. You see, Jesus taught in parables. Some parables were probably based on true stories or real-life scenarios like, well, the parable of the sower. Others were probably fictitious tales that he created to bring home a truth or a moral, well, like the prodigal son. Still others were analogies to teach us theological principles like the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. So today on the Reality Bible Special, we're going to be speaking in parables as we ask the animals. When was the last time you talked to an animal? <laughs> <laughs> and, yet, and yet Scripture here is inviting us to ask the animals yeah. and they will teach us. Jesus himself says in Matthew's Gospel in the sixth chapter, look at the birds of the air, yeah. see what you can learn from them. Which of those worry about where they're going to get the next meal from? Because they know their Father, their Heavenly Father, will provide food for yeah, them. It's an amazing thing. Well, it's really good to be with you once again. Today we're sharing the Reality Bible special, getting into the Word of God and getting God's Word into us. And I'm joined once again with Pastor Peter Jenkins in the studio. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. My privilege. I'm always glad to be here. Fantastic. Well, you know, we're going to be sharing, let's call it a modern day parable. Ask the animals today. And uh, we'll probably pick this up the next time we get together. We're going to be looking at animals today. With your permission, Pete, I'd like to read our, our key scripture. It's Job chapter 12 from verse 7 to 10. But now ask the beasts and they will teach you and the birds of the air and they will tell you or speak to the earth and it will teach you and the fish of the sea will explain to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? <laughs> it's quite a remarkable scripture, that is, because when was the last time you talked to an animal? <laughs> <laughs> and, yet, and, yet, and yet scripture here is inviting us to ask the animals yeah. and they will teach us. So we're in for quite an exciting episode here, I think. Fantastic. The concept of this is remarkable. It's interesting, actually, that... When Jesus spoke to people that were not religious people, in the Bible they called the common people of the day, mm. non-religious people. That would be, I guess, like 90% of the people in, in this nation, and I don't know what it would represent around the world, people mm. that mm. don't go to a place of worship, don't pray, mm. don't read scriptures, non-religious, the ordinary everyday people. When Jesus spoke to them, he never quoted a scripture. He only ever spoke in parables. Mm -hmm. Now, why was that? Well, primarily because he wanted them to understand what he was saying. Yeah, he yeah. didn't want them to be confused by some religious jargon and some prejudice idea. It says the common people heard him gladly because they understood what he was saying. And my prayer is that as we look at this particular scripture and we examine it and unpack it a bit, that every single person that hears this will really understand what we are saying in a practical way. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself says in Matthew's Gospel in the sixth chapter, look at the birds of the air. Mm -hmm. So in the Old Testament, we're invited to look at the animals, talk to the animals, see what we can learn from them, the fish of the sea. How amazing is that? And now Jesus is saying, have a look at the birds of the air. Yeah. See what you can learn from them. Which of those worry about where they're going to get the next meal from? We are in a world today that is full of uncertainty. Yeah. Prices are going up and up and up. People are worrying about getting food on the table. We have churches in the Philippines. I've had a message this morning. We can't pay the electric bill. We've run out of gas. We can't cook any food. It's getting really hard and it's getting desperate. Mm. But you don't see the birds. I've got a bird table in my garden. Mm. I put food on there. 
and sometimes the birds have edited all, all the squirrels have took it. <laughs> and I see birds come there and there's nothing there. Yeah. And I see them and they look up. I don't see them pulling their feathers out <laughs> and banging their heads on the fence because there's no because they know if there's no food on my table, their father, their heavenly father will provide will provide food from yeah, somewhere. Absolutely. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. So we we have one thing in common with all the animal kingdom, and that is God is our provider. And we forget that sometimes. We forget that everything we have comes from God. If God doesn't send the rain and God doesn't send the sun, then the seeds can't germinate. And if they don't germinate, they can't grow. And if they don't grow, we have no food to eat. Everything comes from God. I, that's why... I love harvest festivals. It's a time of thanksgiving mm -hmm. for the goodness of God, Absolutely. things we take for granted. And I guess in the prosperous, materialistic Western world, we do take an awful lot for granted. And it's at times like this, at times of uncertainty, times of pressure, times of confusion, that we are brought to a place to consider perhaps a little bit more of the things about life that we should be more aware of. Mm -hmm. There's a few basic questions really that only we human beings can know we can never find the answer to these questions Dudley from talking to the animal kingdom mm -hmm. only human beings can find out where we have come from there's a great search for the meaning of life I talk to a lot of people that don't go to church that don't have faith but they they want to know something about where we've come from <laughs> The evolution has come up with their ideas, their theory. It was a big bang. But then that's supposed to be the scientific explanation. And I'm a little bit of a scientist myself. And I never knew any explosion that actually created order. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It's <laughs> impossible. On the contrary. It's absolutely. Yeah, it, yeah. It, that breaks every rule of every basic scientific concepts. It, it doesn't work. And then how did it all begin? They have no idea. So where have we have come from, we'll never find the answer to that by talking to the animal kingdom. Why we are here? What is the purpose of life? Why are we alive today? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't I alive 100 years ago or 500 years ago or whenever? Why are we alive today? Only the Bible can answer that and it actually gives us the answer to that in the book of Ephesians. It says that before God created the world, think about this. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to really think about this. Mm -hmm. Before God created the world, he ordained he planned that we would be alive at this time mm -hmm. with a purpose mm -hmm. to bring praise and glory to the Creator. Mm -hmm. that's, the, mm -hmm. that's the fundamental reason why I'm alive, why you're alive, why all our listeners are alive and people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, the story's told of a man who was digging a hole. So somebody said, why are you digging that hole? He said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm digging this hole that, that, I can get, that I can earn some money. Well, why do you need money? Well, I need money so I can buy food. Well, why do you need food? Well, mm. so I can be strong. Well, why do you want to be strong? He said, so I can dig this hole. I challenge every one of our listeners to ask themselves that question. Ask yourself, why are you alive at this time? Where have you come from? Yeah. But perhaps the biggest question of all is, where are we going? Mm -hmm. You know, two of my friends have died recently, and um, it brings the whole reality of death home to you. Um, one of them... He came to the church I pastored 48 years ago and he was 20 years of age. Would you believe he was looking for the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. He was an evolutionist. He was very academic, 20 years of age. And he heard me preach the gospel and this is what he told me not long before he died just last week. Mm -hmm. He said, I didn't understand what you preached, but I made a decision to believe it. Wow. <laughs> that is yeah. so powerful, yeah. Dudley, yeah. because it's what you believe, not what you understand. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand how a brown cow eats green grass, gives white milk and yellow butter. I just drink the milk <laughs> and I eat the butter. I don't understand how a remote control works on a television. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I, my mother used to wave it around in the air. She didn't even know she had to point it at the television. <laughs> I remember <laughs> the ones that were attached to the cable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, how does it work? I don't know. But it doesn't stop me believing if I press that button, yeah. the channel will change. I don't know how my car works, but it doesn't stop me believing if I put my key in the ignition, the engine will start. Yeah. And I want to encourage people today, move on, move on beyond what you understand, because that will limit you. Mm. 
mm. and step into what you believe because God has given every single human being a measure of faith. Faith is a choice in the sense that you choose what you put your faith in. Mm. So those who believe in evolution have put their faith in it. They don't understand it, <laughs> but they put their faith in it. Mm. So it is a choice, yes. For me, I've chosen to put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for me on the cross. The living creator. What the Bible yeah. has told me he is, he is doing for me right now and what he's going to do for me for all eternity. So where we differ to the animal kingdom mm. is that we, we alone can discover where we've come from. Yep, the Bible gives us the answer to that in the first verse of the Bible. I mean, God doesn't take long to appear in the Bible, does he really? He comes on in the <laughs> in first the chapter beginning. and the first verse. <laughs> yeah. In the beginning, God yeah, yeah. created the heavens and the earth. Everything was made by him and for him. I believe that with all of my heart. Hmm. Why am I here at this time in history? But more important than any other question, is where am I going when I die? Mm. Because the one thing is sure, Dudley, the death rate is one in one. <laughs> if yeah, I were right. selling life insurance, Absolute, I'd have a lot of customers yeah. listening to us right now yeah. because it is appointed unto man once to die. Yeah. As one man said, none of us get out of this life alive. <laughs> it is so true. It's true. But it's the least thing we prepare yeah. for. Exactly. We prepare for holidays. We prepare where we're going tomorrow. We prepare for so many other things. But the one thing we are least prepared for is what happens when we die. And only we, men and women, human beings, mm. have the capacity, the God-given capacity, to make a choice about where we will spend eternity. Mm -hmm. The animal kingdom can't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So nice. when it comes to understanding that, if we don't understand those three questions, if we haven't found an answer to those, you know what? We know better than the animal kingdom. I'm no better than my dog. I'm no better than, I've got a parrot. Hmm. Now my parrot is it's an African grey parrot oh, and it's so it. funny. They're, they're beautiful birds. It's, but it's they? hilarious <laughs> because it can mimic the telephone. So you, it, it starts ringing the phone and you, the number of times you get up to answer the phone <laughs> And it's the parrot. Stupid bird. <laughs> then he, then he, and then, then the dog's name is Charlie. So he, he will, he will call Charlie. He will call Charlie. Charlie will get up <laughs> and walk towards the parrot, and the parrot will say, "Good boy, Charlie." <laughs> Now, neither neither Charlie nor the parrot have got a clue what they're like saying. A fiasco, they, it's a ridiculous. <laughs> it is absolute. <laughs> it is so funny, right? And though the parrot is speaking to the dog and the dog is reacting to the parrot, they have no idea what <laughs> what is going on. But somehow the dog has learned that if he gets up and goes over to the parrot, we think that's funny and we'll give him something to eat. Yes. <laughs> that's the bottom line of it in a nutshell. Cause and effect, isn't it? It is, absolutely. <laughs> now, when God speaks to us, if we don't listen to what God is saying and if we don't speak back to God, how are we any better than my dog and my parrot, mm. who are having some sort of dialogue, mm. but neither has got a clear what really is going on. God is our Father, our Heavenly Father. Do you know, I want to say this. I read this as I was thinking about this message today, this parable today. Only one in 10 million creatures on this planet are human beings. Think about that. One in 10 million million creatures on this earth are human beings. That's a pretty remarkable statistic. One in 10 million. One in 10 wow. million. That's incredible. But if one of us gets lost, can you imagine what happens if when one person gets lost? Mm. There's helicopters, yeah. there's ambulances, there's police, <laughs> there's everybody, whole villages turn out to try to find that one lost person mm. because there's something about a human being you cannot find in mm. the animal kingdom. Mm. When the tsunami hit in Thailand, something strange happened. Do you know, when the tide went out, suddenly went out, it, was, it went out at such a speed, it left fish stranded on the beach. Mm. And so men were running down onto the beaches to get these big fish. The animals were running away while the human beings were mm. running towards it. Mm. All the elephants run up the mountain. This is absolutely fact. Mm. Because they felt in their, in their pads on their feet, they felt the earth tremble. Mm. They felt danger. They'd never experienced a tsunami before. Mm. And they didn't know what a tsunami was. I never heard the word before. <laughs> but they run away from it. Not one 
elephant died in the tsunami. That's incredible. How incredible wow. is that? Yeah. And yet on the beaches, thousands of people died. And some of those died because they went onto the beach when the tide went out. Yeah. And when it came back at 250 miles an hour, Boy. they couldn't get away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ask the animals. Yeah. <laughs> they got a lot to teach us. It's know? amazing, isn't it? And we're going to have a look at some of those animals and see what we can maybe learn from them, um, even though we should be teaching them. But Scripture tells us that they can teach us. Fantastic. This is such exciting stuff. Peter, deep insight. We're going to take a little break and be back after this. You're listening to The Reality Produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. We depend on the generous gifts of our listener to produce this program. You can help reach millions of folks with the sure reality of the message of Jesus by becoming a Sure Reality Vision Partner. To partner with us, please visit the website, surereality.net, and click on Become a Vision Partner. So good to be with Pastor Peter Jenkins once again on the Reality Bible Special. And we're looking at animals today. Uh, Ask the animals. Uh, Peter, you've given us some deep insights as to the reality uh, of the fact that uh, animals uh, know so many things more than we know. Um, You know, and and as you were talking, it just occurred to me, we spoke about faith a little earlier. I don't know. I don't believe, personally don't believe animals uh, have faith like you and I have faith, and yet I believe they have an awareness of Creator. Absolutely. They have an awareness of the one who created us. And as we discovered when we read jo- read Job chapter twelve, uh, the Scripture says we should ask the beasts, <laughs> and they will teach us. Teach us more, Peter. It's incredible. It, it's incredible. As I began to think about this whole subject, really, I you know, there's so many applications. But but right now, I want us to think uh, about Luke chapter eight. And something Jesus said there. He said, a farmer went out to sow some seed. He scattered it across the field. Some seed fell on footpath. It was stepped on, and the birds came and ate it. Other fell on shallow ground with underlying rock. The seed began to grow, but it withered up and died. Other seed fell among the thorns. It was choked. Other seed fell on good soil. The seed grew, produced a crop 100 times as much as had been planted. And when he said this, he called out, whoever is willing to hear should listen and understand. Mm. To our listeners now, I'm saying to you, we're sowing some seed in your life, okay? Mm. That seed is God's word. Now, that seed will fall on some good soil. It'll fall on some sh- on some shallow soil. Listeners have to determine the state of their own hearts. Mm. But we have to realize something very important, that there is an enemy that wants to steal that seed from the soil of your heart. The Bible describes them here as the birds of the air. And I want us to think about a few birds of the air. Mm, mm, Think mm. about the hawk. Now, the hawk is a loner. It's a distant bird. It it soars up there away from all the other birds. We are designed for fellowship. The Bible says it isn't good for man to be alone. We need each other. And you need to be very careful if you are living a Christian life or trying to live a Christian life without any accountability, without any relationship with other Christians, I encourage you to find someone somewhere Mm. that you can pray with, that you can share with, because the hawk is waiting to pounce to take away the seed Mm. out of the the soil of your life. What about the peacock? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we all know about as proud as a peacock. The peacock is a very beautiful bird. Proverbs 6 says, These six things the Lord hates. In fact, they're an abomination. And the first one that is mentioned there is a proud look. Mm. I find that interesting because what the Bible regards as being a sin, pride, today we celebrate with gay pride. (laughs) So we celebrate the fact a million people march on the streets of London celebrating gay pride. So that is something to celebrate. Now, whereas the Bible, I'm so old, I was brought up to believe that pride was a sin. And we're told it is very clearly. So beware of the the peacock spirit, okay? Because it will puff you out. It was pride that got the devil kicked out of heaven. And if it got him kicked out, I have to be careful of pride. Mm -hmm. It will creep in and you will end up convincing yourself everybody else is wrong and only you are right. I've been there, so I know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about the parrot? Mm -hmm. Now, I've got a parrot. Mm -hmm. 
And Harry the parrot is the funniest bird you could ever meet, but he has nothing original to say. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, yeah. To my knowledge, he has never invented one word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has nothing original to say, uh -huh. but he just repeats what everybody else says. Yeah. There's a lot of people like that. Absolutely. I call that gossip. Yeah. And gossip is so dangerous. Gossip will, will take the seed of the God's word out of your heart. God does not like gossip, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Yeah. If you spend five minutes with a gossiper, you'll end up feeling depressed. Because gossip usually is always bad news. Always pulling somebody up. You don't get much gossip that's giving you good news about good news somebody. You, you positive. don't. I've no. never known a gossip, no. but, oh, negative. have you heard what a wonderful... <laughs> no, no, no. Have you heard what... Because <laughs> you want to dwell it's on It's always negative. ripping apart. Yes, it's yes. always negative. It's always destructive. There's something called parrot's disease, you know, which you can ca catch from touching the parrot. So be careful you don't touch the gossip yeah. because you might catch it. And then, of course, there's the crow, the black crow. Mm. Now, the crow will land on anything. When Noah sent out the birds to see if the, if the flood had gone down, the first bird he sent out was a dove. And the dove came back because the dove is a clean bird. It would not land on rotten flesh. It, it found nowhere to land, mm. came back. He sent out the raven and didn't come back. Because hmm. the raven's an unclean bird and it will land on anything. Right. Right? So be careful Scavenger. what you feed on. Mm -hmm. Be very careful what you... There's a lot of junk in this world. There's a lot of bad stuff in this world. Be careful what you feed your mind on. See, th there's only two ways that the devil can get into you. But think about this. That's through what you see and what you hear. Hmm. You don't come up your nose. <laughs> it's what you see and what you hear. What you see and what you hear will mould what you think, as a man thinketh, so he is. Mm. So we, we can take control over our thoughts by controlling what we see and what we listen to. We have to think about the crow, the raven that Noah sent out that would land on any rotten, dirty, stinking flesh. Mm. The dove wouldn't land on that. Be careful. Mm. Be very careful mm. what good you one. feed on. Very good. Because it will, you see... If you eat junk food, you will suffer from that. You really will. You can only eat so many McDonald's, can't you, really? <laughs> I mean, I don't mind a McDonald's, but not for every meal. Absolutely. I can't handle it. I couldn't do it even if, you, if I wanted to. It could mm. never happen. And then there's the cuckoo. <laughs> when I was growing up in Wales, we'd go up into the mountain. It was safe then. For, you couldn't, kids couldn't do it now, you know. But we'd make swings on the trees and swim in the river. And it was wonderful. And I can remember now you're in the cuckoo. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Mm -hmm. And the cuckoo is renowned for laying its eggs in another bird's nest. It's born idle. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> right. It will lay its eggs in another bird's nest. And when those eggs hatch, they will kick the other birds out mm -hmm. and expect that other bird to feed them. The cuckoo just lays its eggs, doesn't even build a nest. And then expect somebody else to bring up its offspring. Mm -hmm. You know, every church has got cuckoos. <laughs> They've got no real commitment. They just, they just expect everybody else to do yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They turn if they turn up, they think they've done you a favour. They'll never, ever, ever offer to do anything. They'll never get involved in any rotors they never clean the church they don't make any financial contribution but they're the first one to find something wrong mm -hmm. be careful <laughs> be careful you're not a cuckoo because it doesn't take long to recognize a cuckoo because a cuckoo can only say one thing cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> what about the magpie yeah now the magpie Everybody knows a magpie. Well, they're renowned for being thieves, you know. They're, they're known to go in people's houses, fly through the window, see something shiny and take it, steal it. They don't pay for it. They just see something shiny, fancy it and take it. We have to be careful of spiritual magpies because they will rob you of your joy. Mm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I am 77 years of age. I preached Friday night, I went to Wales on Saturday, I preached yesterday morning, last night, I'm with Dudley today, and I'm doing, I'm speaking with Ukraine refugees this week, wow. doing a Bible study for young people getting baptised. Why do I say that? For simple reason, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
I'm not superhuman. I'm not a superhuman being, but the joy of my salvation, of thinking, of remembering what Jesus did for me on the cross, mm. gives me a daily injection of Holy Ghost energy. And I mean that with all of my heart. And I cannot allow anyone to rob the joy of the Lord from Amen. me. Come if on. I lose the joy of the Lord deadly, mm. I've lost everything. Absolutely. I have to guard that with all of my heart. Absolutely. And I want to speak to someone now because I feel in my spirit that that joy of your salvation, you don't have it right now. You've been battered, you've been bruised, things have happened, the enemies come, the birds of the air have come, and they've taken away the seed of God's word, and they've robbed you of your joy. In Jesus' name, I pray now mm. that the joy of the Lord will be restored into your life. Amen. From your head to your feet, the joy of knowing your sins are forgiven, your name is written in the book of life, that God is your Father, Jesus is your Savior, the Holy Spirit is your friend. I pray in Jesus' name Amen. that you will receive a fresh baptism yes. of the joy of the Lord because that is your strength. And the joy of the Lord is the joy of the Lord. The Bible says he rejoices over me with dancing. You, I cannot manufacture this joy. It comes from the fruit of the Spirit, which is joy. And you cannot fake it either. You cannot if fake you it. Haven't, I, listen, Dudley, if I haven't got it, I can't pretend I have, right? Because mm -hmm. it ain't there. Mm -hmm. If I, you know if you've got it or not. Mm -hmm. And our listeners will know if they've got the joy of the Lord. And for all those that haven't received it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come a on. fresh baptism Spot of on. the joy of the Lord. And the last one is the ostrich. You know what the ostrich just buries its head in the sand. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want to know anything about reality. It doesn't want to know about the needs of others. An ostrich can't fly. An ostrich doesn't want to know anything about anybody else, just pretends nothing is happening and buries its head in the sand. Beware of the birds of the air. Beware of the hawk and the peacock and the parrot and the crow and the cuckoo and the magpie and the ostrich, mm. because all of these will try in a spiritual way to rob you of the seed of God's word and to leave you bereft of that seed. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name, you know, every farmer uses a scarecrow to frighten off all those birds, right? That mm. scarecrow is there to frighten them off. Well, we've got something more powerful than any scarecrow. We've got the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, and the Word of God. Peter, thank you for joining us. Next time we get together, we're going to continue to ask the animals. What an amazing discussion with Pastor Peter Jenkins today as we asked the animals about the principles and purposes of God in our lives. God is our creator, he's our sustainer, and he's our provider. And this is what the animals can teach us. If anything we've said today has just struck a chord in your heart, write to me by email dudley at surereality.net. Email me dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y, at surereality.net. Well, the reality is produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. It's with your prayer and financial support that we produce these radio programs. So please consider partnering with us by going to our website, surereality.net. Click on the menu option, Become a Vision Partner. So it is from me, Dudley Anderson, to you, as always. Keep your eyes on Jesus and your nose in God's Word. God bless. God bless.